What is cracking with you, you too? It's your man King Howie, back with another video. Um, haven't posted any new videos in a minute. I've been out of town, you know, handling business, trying to get through the rest of this year. It's been real busy as far as uh, my profession goes, uh, how I bring home the bacon. But let's get into it. LeBron James and Alonzo Ball both put up a magnificent triple-double. Uh, Alonzo Ball has 16 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, 5 steals, 1 block. LeBron James, I think, had 24, uh, 12, and 11 or something like that. I think he had, I think he had a steal. Um, this was a great win against the Charlotte uh, Hornets. Uh, for some odd ass reason, LeBron just seems to destroy this team <laughs> every time he plays them. Um, I like it. I like LeBron going into Charlotte, slapping Michael Jordan in the face after he slapped his slapped his uh, the player that he uh, what was it? Malik Monk behind the head um, a, a few nights ago. But this was a good bounce back win for the Lakers after getting uh, cheated out by the refs <sighs> from the Houston Rockets with James Harden and his bullshit triple uh, 50 point, whatever he put up, triple double, that bullshit triple double, man. The league need to stop letting James Harden get, in the, get away with all of that crap, man. All that flopping around and them douchebag moves. Just trash, man. He did it again tonight. He did it again tonight. How many times did he get to the line uh, tonight? What? Probably 17, 15 times at the line. Bullshit. Bullshit calls. Left and right for James Harden. But anyway, um, I love tonight's game. Lonzo Ball, if you could just stay consistent with the way you the way you play tonight, you can be the key spark for the Lakers, Lonzo Ball. All we need, like I keep saying, all we need is a guard that can score. If if we could if Lonzo Ball could play 16, 10, and 10, if he could, I'm not saying give us a triple double every night, but Lonzo Ball can give us a low budget triple double every night. If he could do that, the Lakers would be in good shape at the point guard position. You know what I'm saying? If Lonzo could just drop between 14 and 16 points a game, um, six, seven, eight rebounds, maybe seven, eight assists, you know, he already, you know, plays good defense. I wish he was um, top five in the steals, but, you know, the top dogs right now and is still in the ball is – uh. OKC with Paul George and, and Russell Westbrook. You know, them dudes be stealing the ball a lot. But Lonzo's defense is very key to the Lakers being successful. Um, It was a, excuse me, it was a good game. You know, blew them out. I think they only put up like maybe 70-some points. Um, Lakers was just going on runs. Uh... Siv Mikhailu got busy hitting threes. Um, spectacular dunk from uh, JaVel McGee and uh, Lance Stevenson. Even Siv Mikhailu caught a lob. Um, but this was a Lonzo ball game. I'm not going to give credit to LeBron James because LeBron James is going to do what LeBron James do every night. You know what I'm saying? He's expected to put the type of numbers that he put up. Um but this 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 game goes to Lonzo Ball. Lonzo, if Lonzo could just <laughs> play like this every night. Now, the next game, who knows what we're gonna get out of Lonzo Ball? We might get six points, four boards, seven assists, maybe two steals. That might be his next uh his next um stats or whatever in the next game. But these two put on a show. It's um it was a great performance. It's the first time since 1982 that two Lakers have both put up triple doubles in in a basketball game with Kareem and Magic and now LeBron 
and uh, Lonzo Ball. And it's the first time since 2007 that two players on the same team put up a triple-double. And the last time that happened was with Vince Carter and Jason Kidd. So um, congratulations to Lonzo Ball and LeBron James for uh, putting this team on their backs. You know, we got to give Kuzma some credit, too. He went out there and did his thing. Same thing with Lance Stevenson. Um, I would like to see a little bit more production out of uh, Josh Hart, but I think he's starting to get over his injury. <coughs> and just to backtrack on the Trevor Ariza talk, um, that is now over with. The Wizards have now acquired a Trevor Ariza through a three-way three trade with the Memphis Grizzlies. And... Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, the Phoenix Suns, and the Washington Wizards. So Trevor Ariza is now in a wizard to help them on the defensive side of the ball um, and rebounding, knowing that Dwight Howard is having ass problems right now. So um, shout out to Trevor Ariza. The good thing about that is that Golden State didn't get him, even though Golden State didn't have much to offer in a trade. I mean, who was they going to offer? Igladawa and uh, Sean Livingston? They already got two bigs, two young guys that's hurt for the whole season. Um, they're still waiting on, um, what's his name, Boogie Cousins to come back. And this is the thing about the Golden State Warriors. Everybody keeps saying, oh, when Boogie Cousins come back, oh, man, watch out. Boogie is going to be limited. Do y'all remember when Kobe came back from his Achilles tear, his Achilles rupture, and his uh, when he had that injury? Kobe wasn't the same. It's even going to be uh, more pressure on DeMarcus Cousins because he a big man. You know what I'm saying? DeMarcus Cousins is, DeMarcus Cousins is not light in the ass. You know what I'm saying? He's a big dude. Um, so I expect him to, I expect the Golden State Warriors to bring him back gradually, probably playing maybe 8 to 10 minutes, 12 minutes a game before they feel comfortable with letting him run um, a complete 20. And that might be spaced out. Um, so... Right now, they still have the Warriors as the team, the three-peat or whatever, but eh, we'll see what happens, man. We'll just watch and see what happens um, with all of this Kevin Durant rhetoric about LeBron James and um, <laughs> just talking, all talk. Um, I don't know what's gotten to Kevin Durant, but he sure is talking a lot. Um, may, may, maybe it's something going on. Maybe it's some kind of psychological, emotional thing going on with, with, K, with KD. But shout out to him, you know what I'm saying? No hard feelings, but um, as of right now, when it's all said and done, LeBron James is still the number one player in the league, best player in the league, hands down. A guy that, I mean, no, no, no disrespect to KD, but KD, you did have a game where you only put up like nine points, and I think that was the game. Uh, Y'all lost that game too when Curry came back. But anyway... Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, let's talk about the Phoenix Suns. Let's let's get into this now. Let let let's let's take some steps back. Let's take some steps back. Now, remember when James Jones, LeBron, LeBron James boy toy, um, that went <laughs> that followed him around to win championships ring championship rings without even contributing any type of um basketball i mean he played some games but those was like either they were getting blown out and lost or they were blowing the team out and they let james jones get some time well james jones is now the president of the phoenix suns <laughs> and the way that that three-way rate that three-way trade went it was a disaster at, at first complete disaster they didn't know if it was uh Dylan Brooks or some other dude named Marshawn Brooks on the same team that was going to get traded in this three-way trade. But the owner had to step in and and take over and make and get the get the job done. But not only that is the problem with the Phoenix Suns. The only two people that's going to stay on that team is Devin Booker and Aiden the center. And uh oh one more guy, T.J. Warren. Those three guys are solidified to stay on that team. 
right now the city of phoenix is not backing the phoenix suns for them to get this what uh i think they're trying to get a new stadium or new arena basketball arena or something like that but the city the people from the city have stepped up and complained about this owner <laughs> the the city is not trying to get involved with them building this new arena for what all they gonna keep doing is tanking every year to try to get a number one draft pick you know what i'm saying so that's what happened last year. They got DeAndre Aiden in the first pick. So who knows if they're trying to do the same thing to go get Zion Williamson or any one of them dudes from Duke, any one of the starting five, starting four from Duke. Um, I think the first, I think the, the, the top five draft picks is like three dudes from Duke, Bobo from, uh, from Oregon, and I think some other guy, some other cat. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Phoenix Suns. But LeBron James planting James Jones over there, I think that was a, st a strategic move. I think once that move happened, that should have told everybody that LeBron was coming to the Lakers. Even though people have said it like a year ahead of time that LeBron was coming to the Lakers. But just James Jones becoming the president of the Phoenix Suns and them trying to finagle some type of situation to bring Trevor Ariza back to the Lakers. It didn't pan out. Um, who knows what's supposed to happen at the trade trade deadline. I think it's like, what, one more day? I keep hearing this date, December 15th, December 15th, December 15th, um, about this whole... Anthony Davis trade that's supposed to go down. I, like, I, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Right now, you know, <clears throat> the Lakers are, they're saying in the media that they're going to believe in the young guys that they have, which they should do. Like, look, you know, let's not, let's not get carried away. We still have the off season to go get free agents. You know what I'm saying? Let's not, you know what I'm saying? Make a mistake early by getting Anthony Davis. So far, he's been banged up, getting injured. <laughs> and trust and believe, man, uh, uh, Clutch Sports is watching close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Clutch Sports is watching close. Um, another thing, too, shout out to Carcino for life. Um he made some very interesting points about the uh, LeBron James buddies being mentioned and 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 being featured on uh, ESPN. You know, all of LeBron's agents' names being popped up and praised. Like, when did that start happening? I mean, nobody was talking about Rob Palenka. It, 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 when Kobe was being when 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 he uh he had Kobe as his agent, nobody was talking about uh about Rob Palenka when he was uh being the agent for KD. All you would hear was, "Oh, Rob Palenka, he's well respected by the players." Not you know these guys wasn't getting no no freaking TV time and talking about their background and being on um LeBron show the barber shop and uninterrupted and. <laughs> shut up and dribble and and um, i'm more than an athlete like th th this whole fiasco with lebron james being in hollywood man is just gone overboard man overboard i mean you look at dudes like like it's other stars in the nba and I understand where, where where KD is coming from. Like, it's other dudes doing great things. You know what I'm saying? In the NBA, playing great basketball. But it just seems like every day, all of the focus and attention is on LeBron James. And I'm not saying that's not it's LeBron James' fault. But part of it is, man. You know, you create this atmosphere of, around a bunch of young guys and, you know, to some of them, it might be culture shock. You don't know how, you know, they're going to be able to deal with this. You know, right now they rookie, so they they pretty much got to bite their tongue. 
You know what I'm saying? Plus, you know, the vets over there like Rondo and and Lance Stevenson and JaVel McGee and Tyson Chandler and Michael Beasley, these guys have high respect for LeBron. So, you know, they're not really going to say much, even though uh, Tyson Chandler has said some things like, oh, when you, when you come over here and play with LeBron, <laughs> you just have to understand that <laughs> this team is going to be all about LeBron. So um, the thing that we must keep in mind, we just have to hope that the coaching staff is saying and doing the right things by these young guys to keep their minds focused on what's important, and that's winning ball games, despite the media frenzy and all of the nonsense and cheerleading that's going on for LeBron James behind the scenes. Um, another thing to point out is Right now, the Lakers are looking good. The Lakers are looking good. I think we're like fourth or fifth seed somewhere around the middle um, battling out with the Clippers who uh, I think they lost tonight. I think they lost tonight to OKC. Um, so this might put the Lakers, it might keep us tied or a, a game ahead of the Clippers, which is a good deal. So, um, Oh, one more thing. The whole Phil Jackson showing up at Lakers facilities. He's been showing up there. He's been he's been coming up there to the Lakers facilities. What I mean, we know about the whole uh I don't want to say beef, but you could say incident or altercation between LeBron James and Phil Jackson. You know, Phil Jackson has said some things about LeBron um that De that LeBron didn't like. And LeBron responded. Um, but Phil Jackson showing up to Laker facility shouldn't bother LeBron at all. You know what I'm saying? Phil Jackson has won five championships with the Laker organization. So, of course, Phil Jackson is going to have some type of uh, some type of uh, leeway to show up there. He's a highly respected coach. You know what I mean? So... Everybody talking about, oh, why is Phil Jackson showing up to the Lakers? <laughs> why is Phil Jackson showing up to the Lakers facility? I, you know, people just like to create these crazy ass narratives for entertainment. And I get it. I get it. But to actually think Phil Jackson has some kind of power to to show up at Laker Laker facility and start dictating and changing things around. You got to be out of your goddamn mind. We know he's there for Jeannie Buss and to say hello and, you know, talk to Magic and his, you know, pleasantries with the facility and some of the people he know that work there. You know what I'm saying? And plus, is, you know, that's where Phil Jackson, um, Phil Jackson's doctors are. He has, he goes to L.A. to go see his doctors. So he's been popping into Staples Center offices from time to time. Even before LeBron was even before LeBron got there. So it's nothing new. It's nothing new. We all just need to calm down. Calm down. And just watch how the rest of this season plays out. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully at the start of the second half of the season, this Laker team will know and have grown enough to... Uh, start understanding situational basketball and different concepts of uh how to score the ball when they're on the court um these guys should by now know each other's tendencies and know where each other's spots are on the court where they like to light it up from and one more thing the lakers got to start making their goddamn free throws man <laughs> you know LeBron James is bombing threes from damn near half court, but when he get up to the free throw line, he got the yips. Changing his free throw shooting style, taking that step back and rocking forward and shooting. Man, stick to one style. Or he's standing there with both his feet on the line and <laughs> Lonzo Ball missing free throws. Siv Mikhailu missing free throws. Just missing free throws. Kyle Kuzma missing free throws. I don't understand it. 
The worst free throw shooting team in the league is the Lakers. So that's one thing that has to change. We're the third best team on defense this year, which is amazing in the in a league where nobody plays defense at all. So kudos to the Lakers for that. Um Yeah, my notifications going off about this whole Lonzo ball triple double. Every every other day is we need to trade Lonzo. We need to keep Lonzo. We need to trade Lonzo. We need to keep the Lakers have already stated. Lonzo Ball is not going anywhere. He's in the future plans of what the Lakers are trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So all of that Lonzo Ball getting traded, stop it. It ain't happening this year. So with that being said, man, y'all have a good evening. I hope your money's getting better. I hope you're living right. hope you're eating better. And uh, with all that said, man, this your man King Howie and I'm out.